My name is Ian Moore. I go by Yanto uh, to most of the people who know me these days. I am the man who was previously here and was commonly referred to as Jesus. I am not the man as described in scripture, but I am him returned just as you are all returned also. Now, before I get into this, I'd like to make an invitation to us to not be mean to me. Uh, because there's really no need to be. I know this is a triggering subject. I know that me saying the things that I'm saying is a hugely triggering subject. But there's no necessity for being mean to be me about it. And I don't particularly want to invite any meanness. Either what I'm going to tell you, what I am telling you, is correct. And therefore there's no need to be mean to me about it. Or I'm deluded. In which case there's no reason to be mean to me about it. Why do you... Why would any of us need to be mean to somebody who's deluded? We wouldn't. So, that's my invitation. I'm not inviting meanness, but I am who I say I am. This video is unscripted, and it's my first unscripted video since um, I found out who I am four years ago. So what you're witnessing at the moment is me having a bit of a moment. Uh, it's quite a thing for me to do this video right now. But I consulted with my higher self and between us we agreed that it's time for me to... I've, I've been talking about what I discovered for the past four years I'm putting videos out about it but this is the first time I go unscripted so that you can see me in my raw authentic standard human form um, and I'm self-conscious I am a standard human man I am the man who was here before returned and I am a standard human man, just as you are all returned also, and you are all standard human beings also. I consult with my higher self about making the videos I make these days. And when my higher self told me to do this, it was made understood to me that I should do this in one take and use the first take that I do so that you can get a feel for me in my raw authenticity uh, without rehearsal, without being overly prepared and without being able to gloss over my mistakes. I've got a list of bullet points here. I had a go at doing this yesterday. I thought I was going to do it all in one take. Be very human and authentic and let you see my stumbling and mumbling and bumbling and all of that kind of thing. Because it's really important <laughs> that you see how standardly human I am. Uh, so I had a go at doing it yesterday, I thought I'd do it in one take, and regardless of um, how awful it might turn out, I would post it. It's 20 past 5, Saturday the 6th 
of April 2023 and uh, I'm aiming to have be able to upload this on the 8th of April and hopefully at some point during this video I will relax So I made the first two videos in my video lecture before I found out about who I am and it's all about identifying the objectivity of mathematical truths and what that means and why physical phenomena logically, absolutely must have a non-physical cause otherwise uh, a paradox is brought into play in which physical phenomena is being caused by physical phenomena and that's a paradox it doesn't actually work it doesn't make sense I, I identified because of my revelation that physical phenomena must have a non-physical cause and I identified that the only objective phenomenon in all existence is truths, mathematical truths basically, but correct maths. Truths that cannot not be true, truths that are not physical in and of themselves because they are absolute. They have to be absolutely true at any time, at any location, at any scale, at any speed, whatever. They're just truths that are incapable of not being true at all of, at, at all, all and everywhere. And so the expression of those truths, the relative expression of those truths, is everything we experience. I've got a page of bullet points that I wrote yesterday morning and my higher self said okay when once once that list of bullet points was uh, written down my higher self said okay put them to one side and don't look at them again so here's my list of bullet points goes over onto the other side and the first bullet point name and sincerity and what that means is tell you my name tell you who I am and simply emphasize that I am completely sincere in what I am saying in my claim about who I am. Right, next bullet point. I invite those of you who wish to comment immediately to just wait and check. I have a, a lot of material online, videos I've been making uh, over the past four years, uh, since just before I found out who I am. I've only got 75 subscribers, which is kind of good for me at the moment because it makes me feel a little bit calmer about doing a video like this. It's, I've only got 75 subscribers and they don't comment too often either so that at least <laughs> makes it feels like it makes it a little bit easier to do something as uh, nerve making as this video. But what I have found with uh, the small, very small number of people who occasionally comment on the videos I've been making lately is that as often as not the comment reveals itself to be the comment of a person who hasn't actually watched much of what I've done in the past four years and often it's somebody who is commenting on a video that they haven't watched to the end. I think a lot of the hasty commenters 
simply run the risk of hastily putting your comment down and then people who have actually checked me out more also read your comments and immediately know that you haven't actually taken the time to look at the man that you're commenting on. So I wanted to make that invitation. Next bullet point, the intense human experiences I have been required to go through to get to here. It's almost as if it was planned. It has been a really intense past four years. I've been through all kinds of experiences that um, I did not welcome or enjoy or ask for or wish for. And of course that is what we would wish to happen to our returned Jesus. We would wish for him to know what it feels like to be a human being here in this world right now alongside all the rest of us and if he is to be of any use if he is to help people who who know what the human experience can be like here then of course he's got to go through his own share of that human experience simply so that he can know what he's talking about so yeah it's almost as if it was planned i <laughs> while i was going through the tough times i have been through in the last four years at the times i was going through the the most intense parts of that obviously i, I wasn't appreciating the necessity for it none of it seemed None of it seemed necessary to me while I was going through it. I talk about it in some of my other videos. But yeah, it, you know, it's like, first I solved existence. Then I found out who I am. Then I fell in love with somebody. And then I discovered, I discovered um, a high degree of betrayal in my life from the people around me who I thought of as being close to me. So these four revelations have come with all kinds of stresses and intense experiences. And I kind of feel like the past four years have been the dark night of the soul that I needed as part of my training, so to speak, to get to this place and feel that I know what I want to talk about and how to talk about it. This leads into the next bullet point, which is me or not me. If a Jesus you need, it is a human Jesus you need. A lot of you may be very happen, happy to challenge the idea that we even need a Jesus in the first place. I am not a religious person. I have an antipathy to the Bible and religion in general. So I really wasn't looking for this to happen to me. But for those of you that do think or maybe a Jesus would be a good idea at this time in human history,
it is a, hu a standard human Jesus that would be the most helpful rather than the miracle making superhero Jesus. It's important that the truth that we need to hear comes to us through a standard human being. In order for that truth to be helpful, it needs to be delivered by somebody who is a standard human being. My natural status here. <sighs> when I wrote down this list of bullet points yesterday, I wrote them down quite quickly, feeling nervous about that I was even going to have to do this thing at all. I wrote down the bullet points quickly, thinking, OK, once I've brainstormed my bullet points, I'll consult with my higher self and work out which ones we're going to use. And after I'd written them all down, my higher self said, yep, yeah, that's great, use them all, don't look at them again. <laughs> and I thought, oh crap, if I'd have known that was going to be the case, <laughs> I wouldn't have written half of them down. My natural status here Why did I write that down? It's because of this cultural conception we have of um, status and divinity. Excuse me, rubbing my. I've got a stiff neck, by the way. I'm a standard human being, and uh, I've had a really very bad stiff neck for past few weeks and it's getting better but it's it's not there so if I keep wriggling about I apologize but I need to I'm a standard human man I've got a stiff neck I've got a bald head I've got crooked teeth and it's good it's good we needed me to be like this um, I see myself as having a natural status here but it's not the kind of status one might imagine being associated with, you know, people being mortal, demonic, divine, you know, that kind of uh, moralistic, spiritual hierarchy. Status is an interesting subject because we are all the eternal one I am at the soul level at the human level we are each our own self and in this human world of duality there's all manner of natural statuses in any given situation in any given room so in any given room of people you're going to have one person who is the tallest, one person who is the shortest, one person who is the oldest, one who is the youngest, etc. There's all manner of natural statuses that can be identified and they're not anything at all to do with worthiness and unworthiness. My natural status here, as I see it, is the natural status of an elder who understands a few things that um, pretty much nobody else or very few others understand. Nobody else understands them certainly in the way that I understand them. So I have a natural status here and I am the one who sees her at the moment. But it's not, it's not a, it's not about one person being better than another. At the soul level, we are all the, the one I am, all the, the eternal. We couldn't be more equal because we are each other. 
but here in the this human world of ours where the soul has differentiated it out itself out into infinite selves it's good to be aware of and accept that there are natural statuses because then the right person can be picked for the right job you know if you need the tallest person you go and get the tallest person it's it's simple it's simple and i hope that's i hope i've done a good job of getting across what i'm talking about there and why i wanted to talk about it i am a standard human person just as you are a standard human person but i am who i say i am Four years ago, I had revelations about the nature of existence. These are all talked about in um, a video lecture series. I did a trilogy of videos that are at the top of my homepage. So the origins of my revelation were very much to do with very simple, logical, philosophical uh, investigations into the, the the objectivity of truths that cannot not be true. I identified that the source of us, the source of all of this that we're experiencing, our world, our existence, the source of all of this is the objectivity of truths, very simple foundational truths that simply are true because they simply cannot not be true. Not because they were designed or written or decided upon in advance. They are simply truths that existentially are incapable of not being true and all of the complexity and mystery that is emergent from that simple foundation always has to be emergent from those very very simple and understandable truths that cannot not be true this is the the key revelation that sparked my experience of the past four years of Might not need to too much. I've got a stiff neck. I've had a stiff neck for a couple of weeks now and it's improving but I've got a stiff neck because I'm a standard human man and uh, I've been going through all kinds of stress in the past four years and that is good and has been required. I identified that the living unified field of which we are all a part is seamlessly one. It's impossible for it not to be. And that we all extend into it and it extends into us seamlessly, absolutely seamlessly. So I started to develop uh, my relationship with my higher self by talking to it directly. And uh, I gave it a name, a name that felt like a friendly name to me. So I wouldn't be hung up by uh, feeling intimidated. So rather than praying to God, I'm simply consulting with conversing with my my own higher self that part of me that extends into living unified field um, at the etheric level a finer faster resolution of iteration than I can perceive with my physical senses um, so I called her Sally um, 
our relationship began to develop and she informed me of who I am, who I was previously. And I've never been a religious person. As I say, I've always had a problem with religion. I've always been philosophically curious and I've always specifically had a problem with religion. So to be in this position four years ago where I'm having all of these revelations about the nature of existence and then opening up my communication with my higher self and then being informed that I was him when I never really invested in the idea of him ever in my life in the first place. It's, it's been intense, it's been a lot, because I am a standard human man. And it is absolutely necessary that I am a, a standard human man. And I would not be of the use that we would want him to be if I was not a standard human man. And yeah, it's been a horrible experience getting to this place of self-honesty because it triggered me as much as it triggers everybody else. The idea is though that it won't necessarily have to be quite so horrible for you because I'll have beaten the path. You know, if you have somebody who's uh, forging the way through an overgrown jungle, the people who go be, be, you know, after them will hopefully have a less intense time. So yeah, although the goal I am telling you, for you, is to become <laughs> relentlessly self-honest and that probably sounds terrifying and highly triggering to you. It doesn't have to be as bad as it sounds, is what I'm saying. And it will be fine and you will be glad to have done it once you've done it. And yeah, you might grimace a bit while you're doing it. Higher vibration comes hand in hand with higher resolution because higher frequency is higher resolution. So this bullet point here is um, a technical bullet point. Higher vibration comes hand in hand with higher resolution. Back in 20. 20, I made um, the first two videos in um, a, a, a planned video lecture trilogy about the nature of existence. And the first two videos I wrote and started making before I found out who I am. And they are all about um, maths and logic concepts as they apply to reality, as they apply to the nature of existence. And one of the things that I identify in, in those uh, early videos is the necessity when using maths to model and understand reality it's really important to use three-dimensional maths. And what I'm saying here about vibration, correlating vibration to resolution, we are used to thinking conceptually in two dimensions. When, when we're using maths and science to, to look at the operating of the world, we, we tend to use two-dimensional graphs. And while that can be an incredibly helpful hack 
for dealing with certain technical situations, certain questions of engineering. It can be a really, really useful hack. When it comes to really understanding how maths and conceptual truths relate to our reality, it's really important to do it in three dimensions. So when we think of uh, vibrations, when I think of vibrations, the image that comes to my mind is like a sound wave. And we've all seen sound waves on graphic equalizers and, and things like that. And we look at it and it's two-dimensional. It's peaks and troughs presented two-dimensionally. And because of this, the bit that we miss, because we're not looking at it in three dimensions, we see that a high vibrational sound wave has a high frequency, or in other words, a high number of peaks and troughs that are close together rather than a low vibrational frequency where the peaks and troughs are, are nice and spread out. In three dimensions, the more high vibrational a quality becomes, the more high resolution it becomes. And although this is a technical thing that I'm talking about, and you might be wondering, how is this helpful to me? It becomes helpful if you watch the other videos I've been making over the past four years. But one of the core concepts that is conveyed in those videos is that we are forever raising our vibration, but really we are forever raising our resolution, the resolution with which we are experiencing ourselves and, and the field, the living unified field. We in the living unified field are one. It is us. We are it. And we cannot help but be in a perpetual state of expansion into a higher and higher resolution of being. And it's a phenomenon that becomes interesting and significant. And it's a real cognitive shift. It's an inversion. It's an inversion of what we have all been taught since we arrived here, since we were born. Speaking with self-appointed authority. I'm not feeling especially authoritative at the moment. I'm mostly feeling self-conscious. But there are times when I speak with what feels to me like an absolute authority. But when I do do that, I don't see it as being an authority over you. I see it as simply my self-appointed authority. Because the core truth, the key message that I'm bringing, the foundational never not in effect truth that I'm bringing is that I am the eternal and you are the eternal and every other living being is the eternal. We have one shared soul. The living unified field, all that is, everything in existence, all existence, the living unified field is one. And it has one soul. And that soul is our soul. It is the soul of the eternal. The soul of truth in iteration. Truth that is absolute and cannot not be true and is therefore eternally true and 
because it is absolute truth that is absolutely true, eternally true, it has to eternally iterate. That is what our soul is. It is the, the fire, the iteration, the burning of truth that is incapable of stopping being truth. That is our soul, our source, our cause. Ourselves are ours. The living unified field has one soul and infinite selves and the nature of one self is the nature of the whole and is the nature of another self. It's as it is because it cannot not it cannot be otherwise. It, it simply cannot, and, and that is the only reason. My relationship with the word God is that I don't tend to use the word God apart from for the occasional uh, reflexive exclamation. The language I've developed over these past four years is to do with things like the living unified field and truths that are absolute. And we are all of it. And we are reflections of each other. And this is the foundational truth which is so simple it can be understood by the mind it's only that the iteration of it the different the, the self-differentiation of the simplest truths by the time they get out to this level of human experience it becomes um, so high resolution it becomes unpredictable and therefore mysterious but the foundational truths that are ever presently causing the mystery are ever presently in effect so we can have cognitive understanding at this very foundational level while still accepting and embracing the mysterious experience of it but I speak with my own self-pointed authority and I would I look forward to seeing all of you speak with your own self-appointed authority as the eternal it's a real cognitive shift because the truth that I am the eternal, that you are the eternal. That core foundational truth is the inversion of all our worldwide human culture. Human culture comes in many flavors, but collectively, human culture I refer to as lie culture which sounds quite aggressive and I'm not aggressive to lie culture but I name it that because it's that important and it's that important for us to be discerning about lie culture human worldwide culture and the simple truth that human culture says no to is only that I am the eternal and you are the eternal. That is the lie that human culture is. Human culture says everything but I am the eternal and you are the eternal. The thing about being eternal is 
There is no becoming eternal. One either is or is not by the very definition of the word. To be eternal means to have always existed just as much as it means always will exist. Eternal is as eternal does. That which is eternal is eternal because it cannot not be. That is the only reason for being eternal. It's not about morality. It's not about good and bad. It's not about earning the right to be eternal. That which is eternal has no choice about being eternal. You have no choice about being eternal. I have no choice about being eternal. The living unified field has no choice about being eternal. That which is eternal cannot have a choice about being eternal. Being relentlessly self-honest. It's been horrible getting here and it triggers the fuck out of everybody. That bullet point kind of speaks for itself. Um, it's been weird four years, as you can imagine, and I'm a very isolated individual. I think, I've, I know I've got it in a later bullet point to talk about my personal situation, so I don't need to go into that right now. The, the place one wants to come to if one is looking to be coherent with one's own existence. Relentless self-honesty and I've been becoming more and more relentlessly self-honest in the past four years and I know well that it does trigger the fuck out of everybody because <sighs> I call our human culture, our, the culture that we share all around the world as a collective, as a collective human species, I call it lie culture, which sounds very judgmental and critical. And I, I don't really name it that so that we will be judgmental and critical about it, but I do name it that so we, that we will take it seriously and engage with it with as much discernment as we can. Um, and becoming self-honest, it's, it's what each of us needs to do to become coherent to ourselves but it's nigh on impossible to do that while we are saturated in our lie culture, our human culture. Our human culture is the inversion of the truth of our situation. The, the last thing that our culture looks to say is that each of us is the eternal and the truth of our shared reality is that each of us is the eternal. Our culture says no to that. Our culture says no to what is true about us. So, yes, to become relentlessly self-honest is the frightening, triggering goal that we should have for ourselves if we wish to be coherent with the truth. This has been impossible for us while 
the truth was not available as an option for us to consider, and it hasn't been. In, throughout our human history, the truth that we are and can only be the eternal, that has not been allowed as an option for our consideration, and it is the truth. So my task here is really quite daunting to me, because not only am I a standard human being who spent the first 50 years of his life as a lie culture approved standard human man, I my task is to tell all of our human culture that it is wrong. That's my task. My task here is to tell all of human culture that it is wrong at the foundational level. So you can see why I might feel a bit daunted about that. <laughs> and this is our shared situation always has been, always will be. What happens is that we periodically enter into amnesia. We periodically, as a whole, enter into, enter into self-polarization. And the reason for this is really simple. We are truth in expansion forever. That is what the living unified field is. That is what we are. We are truth that simply cannot stop being true and therefore keeps iterating over and over and over forever. And we periodically expand into a higher order of scale, of resolution, of being, of consciousness, of experiencing. We experience an unavoidable amnesia each time we enter into a higher order of scale of being ourself, because it's our first time arriving at that order of scale of speed and resolution high resolution. It's our first time arriving there and and so we have not yet created any memories for ourselves at that order of scale of being. So we enter in self-polarization, amnesia, self-amnesia, we don't remember who we are. And our entire human history is has taken place within that transitionary period of amnesia of self-polarization of entering into a higher order of scale forgetting who we are having to learn ourselves from scratch again so none of it is to do with morality, none of it is to do with worthiness or unworthiness or any of that kind of stuff. We just enter into amnesia and understandably become afraid and try to make the best sense that we can out of our experience. And maybe that light going out is a sign that I should move on and maybe come to a close. I encourage you to check me out. I encourage you to go to my home page. Um, and check out at least some of the Proof Trilogy. Um, I feel quite self-conscious about the production values, especially with the first one, but all three really. 
because I watched, I, I took a look uh, recently and I noticed how uh, I'm pretty much attempting to drown my own voice out with background music. Um, over the past four years that has changed and the background music uh, went further into the background until it went completely. Um, but I can see, looking back at the past four years worth of work that is all there on my homepage in chronological order, the videos and the mp3s anyway, <laughs> I can see how self-conscious I was then about my, you know, just, just having my voice heard. Um, these days I'm generally much more confident but the videos I put out are scripted and well controlled by me and this video is me being outside of my comfort zone and just being you know, a bumbling human doing the best he can because I am a bumbling human doing the best I can so <laughs> I can understand if you're disappointed, but I encourage you to just pause in your disappointment because it turns out I'm a remarkable man. But one has to look and be open to looking in order to see that. I'm a humble home hobbyist. My production values are fairly low, but I enjoy myself being a humble home hobbyist. I release all of my creative output these days as a, a personal policy, I really set all out into the public domain immediately because I wish all creatives released all of their creative output into the public domain immediately. That is what I wish all of our artists and creatives did, so obviously I have to do that myself. Um, and I am an artistic type. On my website, you'll find music videos, you'll find a, a couple of novels, a book of poetry, um, and all sorts of videos. And I love, I love being a humble home hobbyist more than more than anything. I've tried and you know entering into the creative industry in my younger days and I always left a bad taste in my mouth and I feel great to have come to this place where I know that being a humble home hobbyist is the thing that works so well for me that brings me so much satisfaction fun enjoyment. I'm a humble home hobbyist. Okay, personal life, love life. This is the one I regretted most writing down. Um, I was hoping that when I consulted my higher self about it, I'd be told that I didn't have to include it, but my higher self said, great, everything you've written down, that's what you're going to talk about. So my personal life and my love life. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a drink of water. I'm a I'm self-isolated man at the moment. 
mostly. I I don't see myself as having a single close friend in the world at this moment. I've got a few friends that I play board games with once a week, but we don't talk about anything deep and personal. And apart from that, I've stepped back from all of the people I've known my whole life, more or less, um, because of some of the horrible experiences I've been through in the past four years. So I'm a pretty lonely person at the moment, but it's lonely by choice. I am keeping my culture at, at an arm's length these days. I, I keep it to as low levels in my life as I can. So, yeah, I'm, I'm lonely. I'm a lonely person, but it's by my own choice. It's a very deliberate choice of choosing loneliness for myself for a time. So, <clears throat> My personal life is very quiet, very, very quiet. I spend most of the time on my own. My love life, I did fall in love with somebody. Um, yeah, it was four years ago now, I think. It was 2020. Um, and when she found out that I love her, she stopped talking to me. So that's where I'm at in my personal life and my love life at the moment. It's very, very quiet around here. By my own choice and not by my own choice. Um, The whole falling in love thing is important. It's a whole significant part of the experience that I'm going through. We've got solving existence. We've got being told that I was Jesus. We've got discovering the great betrayal of the people around me but then the world at large in general and ultimately the betrayal of myself by myself and then we've got fallen in love we've got these four big revelations that have encapsulated me like onion skins for the past four years and the whole falling in love thing is just as intrinsic a part of all of this as the other the other revelation the other revelations. I talk about what I talk on love in one of my videos on my channel, on my channel, uh, on my channel, on my and on my website. And I talk about how my journey through the past few years has led me to the understanding that it's all about self-love, all of it. The whole romantic love thing, but love in all of its forms, it all comes down to self-love, ultimately. And I talk at length and, and much more articulately than I'm talking now about it in other videos. What I would like both her and you to know is that my love for you is a gift I give to myself and it's the most beautiful gift I give to myself and 
I have no intention of ever stopping giving that gift to myself. Because why would I? Because I love it. And I'm also aware, I've also learned in the past few years that embodying the chaser is not what I'm going to do anymore. Because obviously, if one embodies the energy of the chaser, then the thing that they're hoping to reach runs away from them. So I am not in chaser energy. I am not chasing after any of you. I am just here. I am just here. If you want to come and see me, you can come and visit me here. And if you don't want to know about me, it's easy enough to not come and visit me here. So yeah, yeah, I'm not chasing, but I am here. And I treasure and cherish my love for you because it is the most beautiful gift. I give to myself and I have no intention of stopping giving myself that gift. How do I feel now that I'm about to close this video? I feel quite spaced out really. If you've made it this far, well done and thank you for making it this far and uh, I have no idea how long it will be before I make anything like this again. Um, but thank you, and I guess I'm, I'm I guess I'm going to wind up and, and go. And I'm not going to pressure myself to say anything too profound or wonderful at the end like this. I am who I say I am. I'm a fumbling, bumbling, standard human man, and that does not stop me from being the man I am saying I am. I am the eternal one I am. You are the eternal one I am. It's the truth, and to come to know the truth only means that you will be able to make choices for yourself that are coherent with the truth of what you are, of who you are. Don't comment until you've looked at some of my other stuff. Don't say anything until you've checked that what you're saying is the truth. And until next time, lots of love.